Okay, if you know me, you know I love Halloween. This is one of our house setups here, even as a projection on the wall. Coffins. I have extra helpers that come out, a couple of my children and their friends. There you can see a coffin. It's not the greatest video, and this blue light that I put on everything makes everything kind of glow and pop. It's an actinic light, kind of like a black light, so it makes everything kind of glow and pop. I have a lot of uh, fog machines out there that pulse on and off, and uh, I chill the fog when it comes out so it hugs to the ground, usually unless it's windy. This spider web here is made out of a day glow yellowish green color that glow in the dark color and you can see the amount of kids I have here. I live not too far from uh, school. In fact, it's in the distance right there uh, just past my daughter who likes to hang around back there and scare kids. There's Dracula's coffin. Um, there's a hanging body up there from the spiders and the, so it's kind of like this spider witch house basically at least in this year here. This was back in 2014. Anyhow, uh, and there's projection on the wall right now. There's uh, there's one of my daughters with her paint, face paint on. There's jumping spiders that I have that are animated to jump at you. Some do and some don't. You never know which one's going to happen. And I've got Thriller playing on there. For a while, the girls were getting out there in the graveyard and actually doing the Thriller dance along with it. It was pretty neat, especially when they do this part right here and they did their arm waving. But uh, And they would all turn around one at a time for that little spot right there. You can see all the bones we have out here and such, and uh, there's flames up against the sides of the house. On the other side here, adjacent to us, there's uh, a uh, life-size 25-foot um, uh, stagecoach that's being pulled by a nightmare uh, that's driven by a skeleton, and inside the back is a coffin with Dracula in it, and hydraulically lifts open the door, and Dracula sets up and screams and then leans back down. So that's pretty neat. The whole house is ringed here and stuff. But what I want to get to about today is uh, a breakthrough that I've had on Halloween. I was going to do some videos that I do on different aspects of Halloween. I've done a few of them on witches. I had this one, Bubble Bubble Cauldron uh, Brew, one that was out for a while. And... Uh, you can see the amount of kids that come in our house. It's just amazing. We set up the inside here with, you know, bloody curtains and shadow mixing on the other side there. There's plasma lights around, lava lamps and so on like that. But uh, you can really see a lot of a... And there's an LED light system that will eventually change colors too. I have it where it rainbows. And you can see the tree here that's here uh, that we made a haunted tree out of. Uh, this is the year we had to take the arms off of it. One of the kids tried to go right through here on the left and took off the arm, but I have arms that were about 10, 12 foot on either side that look like giant clawing limbs that were held by springs, and he broke that one off, so we pulled the other one off too. But uh, let's get on to this and, uh, so I can show you something about um, that I found out about Halloween, Day of the Dead, and uh, all these things that go with it. And of course, one of the more popular depictions you always see about Halloween are a witch riding on her broom, right? It's uh, witches are, of course, are supposed to have a connection, or the shamans are supposed to have a connection to the undead. And at this certain time, it's said that uh, the veil between the undead world and the living world becomes thinnest and you can get closer to the dead. Now the strange thing about this as you look into it is that there's a, you know, there's a day of the dead and it's a Spanish type thing, but indeed there are many, many cultures that have their own festivals of the day of the dead. Just a few mentioning here, of course, the Judeo-Christians here. We have a Halloween, and then it's set for All Saints Day. All Souls Day is after that. Um, Celtic and the Druidic people, of course, had Sam Hain, and that's where a lot of our symbology that we have comes from it, and the idea of gourds and pumpkins that chase away demons that can come. Anglo-Saxons, Dutch, and Swedish actually have Blood Month placed on a harvest moon. 
which is what this looks very much like. Um, Assyria even has one, Persia, Peru, Polynesia, Mexico, India, the Mayans themselves, Australia, and even Japan all have a symbolic Day of the Dead. And strange enough, it's all within about a week of, it's really within three weeks out of the entire year um, with all of these people, by the way. It's within a week with all of them except for one. It's within three days on all except for three of the list I just mentioned there, but yet they all are contained with this exact time, this harvest time. And I've often thought that it uh, has a lot to do with harvesting. It has a lot to do with the sickle. It has a lot to do with symbology that goes back then whenever, you know, it, it's you're going into the dead of winter. So this is the harvest, uh, the ancient story of the grasshopper and the ants and how they work out things and stuff in the parable. But it actually goes much deeper than that, and yet there's something that no one's paying attention to, just like in modern day society we say nobody's ever looking up, nobody's ever paying attention to the stars anymore. With the lights of the city, you can't even really see but all, the, all but the brightest of stars. Well... Interestingly, again, the cosmos plays into this effect, it seems. If we look at each one of these, you know, uh, cultures, they all seem to have a connection also with the Pleiades. And it's well noted that, uh, you know, the Egyptians have a connection to Orion and the Pleiades, that the Aryans had a connection to Orion and the Pleiades, that the Sumerians had a connection to Orion, and the mentioning of that, and sure, that's the three stars that are in a belt there together, but it's a symbolic man, right? And you can see this recreated over and over again, but then near that man, or what that man is facing on the zodiac, is Taurus, okay? Now, Taurus is the bull, and the Pleiades make up what would be its shoulder. Okay? So, whenever we have this exact same time of year, what happens is, is it's hidden for a, the springtime of the year, but during this time of the year, the zodiac is coming up, and basically the Pleiades and Taurus come up and really are hitting, if you face directly due south and you're watching it come up, the Pleiades comes at a point where it's going to hit exactly on center with you as it comes up. And it'll be there in what's known nowadays as the witching hour. And it's said to be between 12 and 1 o'clock, right? Midnight and all these type of things. Well, that's whenever that approaches there. And so that connection on itself is pretty incredible. And you would say, okay, well, that has something to do with something. You know, you find out that Stonehenge and a few places are actually key line to this point. And, of course, they talked about the Festival of Samhain. And the Festival of Samhain is supposed to help trap the demons of the world. And so... You gotta look into this farther. Whenever you look at the Mayans, there's this ancient story of this falling god that ends up happening, and uh, he's a falling star, and it happens at this exact same time. In fact, their Day of the Dead and the Spanish Day of the Dead is the same day. Ancient conquistadors and stuff noted that, that before they had gotten there, they have a festival of the dead on the same day that we have a festival of the day of the dead. And we didn't impart it on them yet. It's already evident. So, kind of strange that everybody has this idea. And then there's witches and brooms and all this type of stuff. Well, let me see if I can put this all together correctly for you. And, uh, you know, uh, I hope I do a decent job of making the connections. But whenever you look at a comet, a comet is 
quite often called a witch's broom in elder times, right? And that it was going to cause, witch's brooms are magical and they cause all kinds of problems. Now, in the Mayan one that we were just talking about, they have a tale of the hair of the gods that falls to earth. And they say uh, sometimes there's a lot of it. Now, this is one of their primordial gods. When you look into their primordial gods, they have beards, and these people that are deifying this don't grow facial hair. And uh, many, many people have made the connection that these must have been some Europeans or something coming time, and I've done videos recently on such, and they talk about, you know, Quetzalcoatl, and uh, whenever they came, that they thought that they were actually the gods, and uh, because they had blue eyes and blonde hair, and so on, so this blondish red hair um, is a signifying thing of it, and you look at the color of the harvest moon, and it's kind of a blondish red, but there's more to this. If we look at something called the Torrid Meteor Shower, which is named for Taurus, it seems to emanate from the Pleiades. Okay? Whenever we look at it, it's weird, but it's almost like a 3D screensaver that whenever it looks like it's coming out of what would be the heart of the bull. Now, that kind of blew me away whenever I started putting all these things together. You know, ancient Sumerians have old bull effigies. The ancient symbolism of God is a bull and a shepherd's hook. The Egyptians had the apis bull, which was kind of a red color, right? It's going to be a red bull. That's where the idea now today of red bull, the drink, comes from. Red bull. What, is, what does this have to do with everything? Well, strikingly, at the week of Halloween, they'll have the torrid meteor shower that happens every year. Now, what created this? Well, it's believed that at least 30,000 years ago, if not longer, a giant comet came into our solar system, traveled too close to the sun, and on its whipping around, disintegrated into pieces, much like the old Shoemaker-Levy comet did and others we've seen which disintegrate. And so they trail out. Well, what this giant comet did was it trailed out, and it, yet it still keeps going around the sun in its same path, which is a, it goes out to Pluto. It's a little up off our axis, but it goes out to Pluto and comes back in and around. Every time it goes around the sun, it's kind of spread it out a little bit, but also it's caused small micro collisions and things like this to happen. And some of those could get slung at us at just any opportune time. But twice a year, we run through this thing. Once in early June, we run through it, but it's at the time, if we were to see where it's coming from, we'd be looking back into the sun right? It's on the other side at that time, and so you don't really see it necessarily, and you wouldn't in primordial times either, but in this modern later time that we see in late October, early November, it seems to emanate directly out of Taurus itself. It seems to come from Taurus, you know, uh, if you're watching it, you'll see streaks, like say her head is where Taurus is and, and Pleiades I'm talking about. You'll see streaks that are coming and they go out like this. They come, they go down like this. They go up like this. But if we were to draw lines where they come back to, they seem to emanate from the Pleiades. And that's strange. Now these Mayan hairs of the gods that fall at this time, are falling stars, or what we would call, no, now today isn't the stars actually falling, but they're meteors that are coming down, okay? Now these meteors make a streak in the sky, and meteors are from red to orangish to yellow even, some real bright, whenever they fire up and give off, you know? So... There's your hair color of the gods, right? 
and in doing so, it looks like Taurus is spitting out these things, these um, hairs of the gods or fibers and things like that. When you look at a comet, they quite often call a comet a witch's broom. Let's look at something else. If you've seen the video I've done on ancient Aryans and Persian beliefs and Mithra, which actually this is the picture of right here, even though it's showing up on there, which is cool, you'll see this depiction of him always killing a bull. I'll get a close-up of it on in a minute, but you can see he's always in this stance with his knee and sitting up on the bull and stabbing it over in his shoulder, right? And that shoulder is the shoulder of stars that is made up by the Pleiades. And whenever he stabs this thing, symbolically, there's always this depiction, no matter how it's made, how it's shown, that he is stabbing it in, his sh in the shoulder and blood is flowing out, right? So this is that same symbology and this is whenever he destroys the world. This is talking about how this type of thing can happen and what had brought on the deluge. And it all connects to the deluge also. I see if I can find the exact picture I'm looking for, but I, I can't. So I'll just grab one of these here. Um, keep thinking it's going to show up. In these ancient depictions you see of Mithra, you can see there's torch bearers. And one torch goes up and one torch goes down. Now in the ancient Mayan belief of this, at the same time, they would burn their brooms. Right? So this again has, what, what is this? Well, they equated it to a spring cleaning, but in the fall. Now, fall and falling stars and the fall of man and fall is the opposite of spring. It's when the amount of sunlight and the amount of darkness get switched. It's whenever the days get shorter and shorter and then all of a sudden there's more night than dark and you go through the cold of winter and when you come back and you hit spring or Easter, it's crossing apart the other way. And it shows you all the symbolism that goes with that and I've done videos on that before too, but let me continue. They always show a dog here. There's usually a serpent, quite often quite long below this. And I tell you, this is the ancient zodiac that's missing now that I've done a video on. Right? This is the 13th zodiac, and so it's missing. But in here, what we have is his legs actually make out Taurus. This becomes Taurus. Quite often in the background here, there's seven stars showing you that this has a connection to the Pleiades. And then he's stabbing in his shoulder and blood's coming out. Quite often it's kind of a splattering and that shows you, hey, that may have a lot to do with it. Now it's a cow, but his tail is made out of grain stalks sometimes, right? He's the sun, the moon, and all it's trying to show you this celestial connection. And then there's a crab down here, or as a scorpion. Well, at this time, the sun is in Scorpio, right? And that's supposed to be a bad omen situation in at least three of these cultures also, including Hebrews. That's supposed to be the time of problems. If we look at something as simple as Noah, Noah said in his uh, 600th year to have made the boat, that was to carry people through the deluge. Well, when did that happen? Well, at the time, believe it or not, they used to have a lunar calendar, and their lunar calendar had gotten so screwed up from the actual end of the year calendar that we currently use as winter, they went on a, off a harvest time, 
and in their harvest time, it started off in August, at the end of August and stuff, that was their lunar year, and so in September it would begin, and there was 11 days that they had to leave out, and you have to in a lunar calendar to make it equate to 365. But it's said that in the 600th year, in the second month of Tishri, uh, this, on the 17th day of the month, right, that that's whenever the flood and deluge happened. If we figure it out from where this happens here, this puts it in the 20s range, right? Another interesting fact is on the 17th of November, quite often you'll see a Leonid or Leo's meter shower. It seems to emanate from Leo. And let's see if I can show you that. Quite often in other depictions, you're going to see Mithra in this depiction here. This isn't the best one for me. This is a drawing of a sculpture that's been cracked off the back of it and so on. But in this symbology here, you see him as a Leo, a lion-headed god. Quite often he's blowing fire down here, which looks like it's onto the world. It's a round globe down here that he's blowing fire onto. And there's a couple of angels in the background. And of course, now we're looking at the Leonid meteor shower. Also, you know, meteors are harbingers of death. Meteors cause all kinds of problems. In fact, in a video that I've done about UFOs recently that I haven't even sent out to y'all because, yeah, it's about UFOs, suddenly becomes valid in this because a few of the times that I mention in that video that it shows are exactly during this week and during these times, and it shows you that these UFOs, these comets, these broom tails of the witches, right, that are coming out of this area. And so, this month there's meteor showers, and here's a picture that was taken here, a time lapse, and I don't know if you can make it out in there. Some of these get real bright. This one's captured, this one's captured. There's meteor showers, and they rain out. The Leonid is around the 17th. They call them the Orionids because Orion dominates the sky in that area. And they seem to emanate out of the shoulder of Taurus. And so this is that effect that you would be seeing if you're looking up in the sky, which people don't anymore. Now, the Leonid meteor shower comes out of the head of Leo. Radiant is referred to of like the point that seems to be coming from. They aren't actually coming from these constellations. It's the fact that we're running through this band of destruction from long ago. And I tell you, this band has something to do with the problem that we had in primordial times. It has something to do with the uh, Tungusta event. It has something to do with the event 10,800 years ago that destroyed the ice sheets. And you can tell we got hit by a large piece that was fragmented all like buckshot and went across the Carolinas and through North America and caused the flooding of the world, right? And here is this concept and the reason that we carry it, and why would all these ancient civilizations have it in this same time frame, and they all have connections to Pleiades and Orion, and everybody's always said, you know, it's, oh, it's UFOs, and we come from Orion, and we come from Pleiades. Well, we come from the stars, and we're all made of star stuff, and indeed, these stars that fall to heaven 
are the angels that fell to heaven in your Bible, right? And in that cause and effect, one third of the stars fall from heaven. It's supposed to happen again at Revelations where the destruction of the world that keeps being recounted every year as Halloween is actually being able to be seen by both sides in both hemispheres, north and south at the same time, emanating from Leo first, and then the bigger one is the Torrid meteor shower, and they seem to emanate from these godlike zodiac things. You see this zodiac, you see the concepts in the Lamasu and the cherubim of these pictures of these guys, these ancient lion gods, and what makes Leo and Taurus so important to us. Well, we pass through this destruction field, and doing so takes about 33 years to go around each little cluster. The reason I'm pointing this out a little bit is that we seems to be that 33 to 40 years seems to be the key point on whenever a destruction comes through or we whip through the area of the ring that is most dense. And projections are that most of this debris is small. Most of it is baseball size to the size of a doghouse. Okay? And it makes these streaks in the sky that you see. Yet other pieces in the larger, denser area are known to be the size of football fields and mountains. And if one of those comes through, breaking up into pieces, it's going to scatter across. If it blows up in the atmosphere, it'll do like the one in Russia does recently. Right? And you see this comet going across right now. This is a broom tail. This is the idea of the crescent. It's the reason you see a crescent and a moon and a star in a lot of ancient symbology. Perhaps it is something to do with the concept of Islam which was Persian based and these people that had this concept and this idea that the truth of it has been lost, but perhaps found now that what we have is a meteor storm or a meteor shower that happens. Now, November 17th is the Leonid meteor shower and there'll be a few striking meteors that come out of it also, but then Taurus comes out and Orion has one near it. This is known as the November Taurids. They come from Taurus. Now, anybody that's familiar with the Bible and they know the Tau and you know Taurid has to do with Taurus and you can see these connections that make between that. Now, Mithras, the picture I showed you there, is called a Tauragdi emanating from Taurus. You can see the bull there and hopefully you've seen my Aryan video where I make and show you the three wise men in ancient art point out the shape of Taurus and so does he. Now he's killing the bull but the bull is Taurus and so it, it confuses me some but not anymore. He is the symbology of Taurus and he is killing hitting in Pleiades, causing this meteor shower that seems to emanate from there. And we've seen this since primordial times. And I'm telling you that quite often at this time of the year, we get meteor strikes. It's believed that whenever we come through the thicker band area of it, that happens every 33 to 40 years. Now, Jesus lived 33 years and 40 is some symbolic in the Bible. And then every 10 runs of this, so every 400 years, which is again symbolic in your Bible, that we run through a thicker band. It may not be totally exactly on that line. It doesn't have to be exacting years and so on, but this was the ideal that is presented to us, right? On clear skies, you can see things like this. You can even see the Orion Nebula and how this crescent and Comet would come across scattering stuff, and as it does, it literally leaves behind a trail to us that runs into our planet. 
you look at this, the way it would be is something along this line where it's cast out in front of us. God, that is so brightened out. Hopefully that's a little better. But you can see it now pelting our atmosphere and running right through it. And that shows you kind of the concept of where that comes from. I'm going to show you a little bit of that UFO video I didn't show. And it's two pages back. Let's see, I'm on my second page here. And you have to go way on down here. It's way back before Blombo's Caves, Grecopithecus, the Calico site at 200,000 BC. Here it is, Strange Medieval Paintings. I'll release this out to y'all too now. I don't want you to freak out on it. But uh, So, in 1561 comets and people saw these things in there and it caused destruction in the cities right when did that happen that happened in the start of november right look at all these ancient depictions they show of this fire and brimstone raining from the sky all these conceptive ideas what month it says it was in the bible whenever they had the deluge and it leads to the fact of us running back through this thing, which I tell you is the concept of Nibiru, the shattered remnant left over from the thing that collided into Earth long, long before we became viable on the planet that somehow we knew about or figured out in primordial times and still have that, which left our asteroid belt and also left this string behind that we keep running back through again. And you have a comet come whizzing across the sky or a big one come by. And uh, it's going to cause a lot of havoc and problems. People are going to make up all kinds of things about it in ancient times. And you're going to see depictions of things that somehow are really um, just taken out of conjecture or somehow. In 1561, it happened. There's a few that are listed in this here that in looking at them, I wasn't really looking at it but uh august 15th in genoa they had one that happened out of it again looking at these two i saw where you know we used to have a 10 month calendar not a 12 and that threw me off a little bit once i realized that and you try to figure it in it too puts three or four of these events in that same timeline chinese meteors they have records of comets and things that they've seen. When does all this happen? Quite often it happens around these times, these events. It seems to key point on it. And ancient art shows you things like black rain that happens off of it, people dying, all kinds of things. It's believed that it had brought the plague to you. And here we have in the distance a lion-headed sun blowing fire at the earth here and there it is again and if you see one over here blowing at the earth what the hell is this well then that would have to be a comet if that's the sun then that's the comet why is the sun slinging at things at us well that's leo slinging these stars at us and it looks like it's bright at night maybe even from the hap of it happening fire starting in the villages left and right you know, this strange correlation that they have. And I, I tell you that even in old cave paintings, they have ideas of this stuff. Now, some of these things I show you here are UFO looking. Other things are showing you Pleiades and Taurus and its connection. Now, some of these paintings here have blatant looking UFOs in the background. And of course, I'm going to show all that to you in the other video. But this idea that even is seen in Christianity and paintings from back then where these priests and people are going and there's this man up in a comet that's coming, the second coming, here he comes, you know, and, and when is the end of the world going to happen? Well, it all has to do with this week. It all has to do with the Day of the Dead. It all has to do with the Festival of the Dead. It all has to do with this torrid meteor shower that ends up striking upon the earth and problems that are brought about 
from its happening itself. Um, quite a few paintings have this in it too, and it looks like that somehow through and into the Dark Ages, we've all but lost this symbology, and it's turned into a strange holiday where we dress up as demons and spirits of the dead. Another interesting fact is cometary sightings are known as apparitions. And that becomes strange when you realize that ghosts and spirits are known as apparitions. And people in ancient times were said to go to heaven and become a star, and there's millions of stars as numerous as the sands of the, uh, on all the beaches of the world. And the festival idea was when you saw these things burn up, that these were people that you knew that you could embrace that were zip and becoming a star. Of course, this is looked at as falling stars. In Revelations, one-third of the stars fall to heaven. We know now if any star fell to earth, stars are thousands of times bigger than earth, a star fell to earth, first of all, it'd have to go many light years to get here in the first place, but then, bam, you know, and, and it would just cook us, there's no falling to earth, and the Bible, they say, when stars fall, they're very small, well, whenever the thicker band comes through, they say 40% of the meteors make it through the atmosphere, whether it ends up being something the size of a quarter to a baseball, to how large it could be. If they have one of these stadium things coming through, we're going to have a large destruction event happen on the planet. If it lands in the oceans, it can cause a rippling tidal wave that would be quite high and cause a giant flood that would mimic Armageddon in the Bible quite well. And I'm telling you that all this comes from this concept of this torrid meteor shower it's the reason for halloween and perhaps it's the reason for religion and a lot of the things that we correlate with it and the concepts of armageddon and bad things happening and the deluge and it all correlates with having happened because of this and that in the ancient sumerian thoughts were the reason that earth was here in the first place so not only has it imparted life and change the world each time it remakes itself, but in that process, made us. Right? So, there's an ancient story about you put your clothes on backwards, you walk backwards, you face south, and you'll see a witch riding a broom. I've never really realized what that meant until you see a concept like this, and this happens on All Hallows' Eve. Um... This was in someone's notes. A lady got killed for this and called a witch and burned alive. This was one of the things that was in her book. And they go, look, she's a witch. But what we're really doing here is seeing symbolism attached to things that because they are so cosmic are entrenched in many, many cultures. Now, my first thought on this is that the only way we could have this on both sides of the planet is that if we knew each other at one time long, long, long ago and kept that story for that long, I find that harder to believe but never never could put the pieces together. In studying for This is Halloween for you, I find that this puts it all together for me and that what we are doing is commemorating those who died and the great world disruptions that have preceded our own epoch that we live in now, and in turn our own dead, and this symbology of being taken to heaven, and the stars, and the destruction, and fire and brimstone, and what takes out Sodom and Gomorrah causes the great deluge, the reason for Halloween, the symbology of Mithra, and a lot of these things that we've grasped and looked at religion and mythology in humanity all over the planet, not just one people. Like, share, and subscribe, guys, and hopefully I've done this a decent job. I know the first time I'll look through it and say I should have said this, I should have said that. There's so much more to this, but there you go. Enjoy.
Have a happy Halloween. <laughs>